All right, so we have three of us, and it's 603. Three is a quorum. I propose that we get started. Um, so if I can navigate my computer to the agenda. Doo -doo. All right, so I'm going to call the regular meeting to order. Um, it's about 6.03 still. First item is set adjust agenda. Um, and I don't know if anybody has anything. I must have missed a beat somewhere because I see on the agenda a candidate for the planning commission, but I didn't see a letter of interest. Did I miss that somewhere? Um. It should be in the drive and it's uh, Sherry has submitted a letter of interest to be considered. So I will double check. I think that's in the drive. Let me look right now. I didn't see it in the drive, but it was me. I said oh. that uh, to Sean. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I, my apologies. I thought that got <laughs> uploaded. I can move it up there. I know it's during the meeting, but I can move it over. Okay. You know. That's fine. Whatever. I mean, uh, I wrote it. I could read it to you if you want. <laughs> yeah. That's not like you're, yeah, you're not exactly a stranger. All right, um, that was the only question I had, I guess. Does anybody else have anything about the agenda? Eric, if we could under uh, executive session um, also discuss our um, police services contract with Greensboro, if we could just allow a few minutes for that in executive session as well. Um, yeah, so also that's also contract. So it's also for the same, um, State statute Actually, reference. Yeah, that's correct. If, if that could include me, Eric, this yep. is Aaron. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, actually, what, what I think we ought to do is we probably ought to add a second executive session. So, do one, come out of it, do the next one. And since Aaron's going to stay for that and probably not for the um, economic development contract one. Um, maybe we'll do the lease contract one first. Is that good? That'd be awesome. I'd rather not stay for, for a second one, but. <laughs> uh, any other changes to the agenda? Could we have a motion to add executive session for police contract? So moved. Second. I'll second it. Oh, I'll give it to Lucian. Give it to Lucian. All right. I thought I heard Kaylee first, but all right. Lucian gets a second. Either way. Um, any other discussion on the agenda? All in favor of uh, approving the um, amended agenda, please say aye. 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 Okay. That's everybody. So. Correct, no nays. All right, moving along. Um, next is um, approving minutes from last time, which was February the 4th. Uh, does anybody have any any comments on those minutes or? No. So maybe I want to make a motion. Oh, great, go ahead, Kaylee. I move that we accept the minutes, the minutes for our February 4th meeting as written. I'll second it, and Cleo does too. Oh, good. Any uh, any more discussion on minutes from last time? All in favor of approving as written, please say aye. 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 All right, so now we have five ayes. I saw Wiz's hand raised for the aye to approve the minutes. Correct, Wiz? I think. All right, so next up is um, do, do communication from the audience. Does anybody on the line want to address the select board for something that's not coming up later in the meeting? Hearing none, moving along, uh, town manager's report by Sean Fielder. Sean, tell us what's been happening out of your office. Sure. Um, uh... 
Okay, so I got a bunch of notes. It's been a busy day. So uh, we did uh, go ahead and get the uh, historic depot lease uh, in order. So sorry, it's uh, being processed is how I should say that. We'll get the signatures to it this, uh, I think this next week is the plan. So Wiz and I have been communicating on that. We'll get support from uh, Alberta for um, notarizing that. So we'll have it in place. And uh, I think we have a, a really sound document that met the uh, interest that Wiz had brought up previously. So Wiz, I think you agree we're good to go on that. Uh, we'll get that in place. Um, um, I think what I want to talk about is just maybe some upcoming things we have coming at us. And uh, then I'll, uh, uh, you know, hit a few notes on a couple of other things happening in this past couple week period. Um, Jeff uh, is processing, and this is for later on in the meeting, uh, two grant submissions for tomorrow. So we'll have uh, some discussion a little bit further on in the meeting about a um, bike and ped uh, Vermont Agency of Transportation small scale grant. So um, we're getting that one processed. And then additionally, we have a better connections grant that um, Jeff's done quite a bit of um, interaction with various entities around, including the uh, Planning Commission and their supportive of this. So appreciate his efforts on that endeavor. And um, as we go further into the meeting, we'll learn a little bit more about that. We have a uh, upcoming, just some details on some operations issues in regards to the public water system. We will be doing a, what is called the source protection plan update. That's gonna be due April 1st. That comes every three years. And basically what that does is it just evaluates what are the potential sources of contamination to our water sources. And it's a management plan to uh, prevent incidents from occurring and basically protect that source. Um, you know, please recall, we've talked about probably a number of meetings over this past year about this spring and summer, we're gonna be evaluating a little bit further what we might have for some backup uh, spring water source options. Um, and, you know, everybody is aware now, well, if you're not aware, we have wells that are uh, gravel pack wells that are just off the Wilkett Street area. Uh, across from uh, Tops um, uh, and uh, is it Walgreens now, I think is the correct business name for the pharmacy there. So that's what we currently have. So we'll be working on these endeavors. Also, we'll be doing our consumer confidence report, which is basically uh, providing the information about uh, what the public water system, what we are obligated to do for testing to ensure the safety of the product for our customers. And this is uh, covering the Safe Drinking Water Act and all the related state uh, slash federal standards. Um, we are, we have completed just, I'd mentioned this a couple meetings back. We have completed the rehab and refurbishment of well number two, talking about our water sources. We're working on well number one um, as we speak. The contractor had an equipment issue, so we're waiting for them, and then we'll be able to get the refurbishment uh, process buttoned up. That occurs every five years. It's good preventative maintenance, and things are moving along nicely there. In this next couple week period, we will be releasing bids for uh, shingle roof replacement for both our public safety building and then also for the historic depot. So we're on target to get those bids out. So any contractors listing now, um, you know, we'll be looking to be getting bids from you and, you know, we'll be advertising in those pertinent locations. So we're on target with that. Um, Can I ask a question about roofing? Absolutely. Memorial building? I'll, I'll try that, to answer. <laughs> is the memorial building also a uh, you're going to find somebody to repair this the slates this summer yeah so what we're what we're we are trying to figure out what options we've got for some slate repair and um, one of the challenges that we face as of right now is the we did get a quote for some work last fall but it was well above what we had available for funding so we're trying to figure out you know, where can we maybe seek out some additional grant uh, support and try to just get this resolved so that in this construction season, you know, we've got a handful of shingles that have come off in some of the valley areas. We're not aware of any leaks, but Eric, we are trying to keep that up on the radar screen to get it taken care of. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Is it possible to maybe get some more quotes as well? Like maybe not everybody thinks it's as big a job as the first people did. Yeah, that would definitely be something we'd evaluate. So I know okay. um, just recently I've seen some ads coming from a couple firms on some of the news outlets and stations, TV stations that I'm tuned into and I've seen a few ads come up. So as I'm talking to various vendors about the um, asphalt 
uh, shingle repair, then it spurs a conversation on, hey, can you do slate? Or do you know somebody else that could do slate? So we're hoping that will open up those opportunities to maybe give us a better price and get it taken care of. That's kind of how we're going about it. All right, sounds good. Um, coming off the last meeting really quick, uh, I'll, I'll mention this. Um, <laughs> Uh, we had a discussion about uh, the request for um, access of the lot off Depot Street and the, the owner of that property, their attorney has been keeping contact with us. We've kept the various departments informed. Uh, I know Wiz has been involved with some discussions uh, with uh, transportation contacts as well as with the landowner. So the, uh, the landowner who purchased the property, their attorney is now investigating some options. So the town's in a holding pattern until they get a little bit more information about what the opportunities might be. One of the other things that it, they are exploring is um, in the event they could not do access a different way, would they maybe be able to uh, do a, a relocation of the section house? Uh, just, you know, that would be to alleviate the concerns about, okay, if the route went by this tight space, if we could move the section house, would that prevent damage to it? These are all conjecture points right now. But uh, the main thing to note is um, we're keeping those communications open. The landowner is doing their diligence to follow up with us as far as what they want to do for next steps. Um, the, I think the only other thing that I'd like to note is um, I did get a request from a, a, a private um, landowner about um, the town potentially uh, considering doing grant support direct to them. And um, I guess I would need some advice from the select board um, as far as, you know, do I, do I mention name any details at this phase? It was, you know, it was an offer up to the town. Again, it's a private entity seeking some grant support from the town in the amount of $40,000 by June 1st. Um, uh, you know, my conversation with this individual the last couple of weeks was uh, just provide, you know, what your request is, and then we would put it before the select board and, and you know, they would consider it. So uh, I guess we would end up just showing this as an attachment item, Eric, if I'm not mistaken, it's addressed to the to the town of Hardwick. So it's something that's public information at this phase. Should I provide more details or what's your preference? Um, yeah, I mean, it's fine to um i don't uh i don't know if it merits like its own yeah, item I, on a future agenda uh, yeah i mean um i i, I or, didn't list it as an agenda item i was kind of just incorporating it as a town manager's update so my understanding is you know the town wouldn't be in a position to do a grant for an individual right you know as is requested here that was my basic understanding so um you know, if, if there's uh, if there's something I'm missing, then just the select board can update me. If you prefer, we table it for now and we list it as an agenda item, you know, in the future. So we have a little bit more time for everybody to just look this information over. That would be fine by me. It's your call. Yeah, I'm just not sure what role the town really has to play in this instance. That's my understanding is, you know, that's where I was coming from as well, but it's not the town manager's decision. It is addressed to the town. So obviously select board would want to weigh in on this as well. The specific request is be great if the town of Hardwick would find grant money in the amount of $40,000 for a, a project the individual is uh, trying to implement. So, you know, they, they, they talk about some, you know, basic reasoning on this, but um, generally, um, you know, we would tie it to a town led program and or tie it to a you know nonprofit that might be going after a special project is generally how we do this so just that's it i just want to get this out there for some basic discussion at this phase wiz do you have your hand up i do um as i read the letter my sense was that he was asking that we ask jeff to write a grant proposal that would then be the the money would go to him um, and he justified it on the basis of, uh, well, if people come and, and use this recreational facility that he envisions, they'd probably come into town and get some lunch or something like that, um, which struck me as not a really convincing rationale for why 
a town employee should spend taxpayers' money on the kind of time it takes to write a $40,000 grant um, just to hand it over to a private individual. You know, I, I just don't think that the numbers justify Jeff's time. Gary. Um, it, yeah, it's a private, it's private property. It's a, it's a, a private business. Um, it seems like the only thing that we could possibly do is if there was a grant already written and he wanted the town support, we could potentially give a letter of support, but that's the only thing that seems like it would be even applicable in this situation. I mean, we, you know, what about the match? What grants are out there? I mean, there really aren't grants out there for personal business, except for like maybe COVID or stimulus grants. And he would need to do that himself for his business, I think. So um, unless Lucian or Kaylee wants to weigh in, it seems to me that, that what I'm hearing is that we're, um, we don't really see a way to um, have the town help out in this instance. I have a quick question, Chad. The, um, I mean, just as an example, typically would we say do a business that they could, would this be something that they could apply for an economic development loan for? Um, it, it, the context for this particular request is it's a private individual. It isn't necessarily a, a business that's established is my understanding. Uh, the answer would be yes. I mean, we what we do, if, if we can't necessarily assist or act, we try our best to get them in contact with, you know, some other ways or other resources to, you know, explore funding support. You know, we try. I don't know Good if answer. it would fit in the economic development loan fund um, parameters, but that's certainly something that he could look at and make an application if it does fit. Yeah, yeah, I think Sean it's just... pretty clear if, if it's not our land, I think Wiz is totally right. We can't, we can't, that sets a precedent for us writing grants for individual businesses, which we don't have time for, unfortunately. Um, but I wonder if we could have an agenda item later on to think about how, um, I know that, you know, Jeff's been doing all this great work and you've been doing all this great work, Sean. And it seems like we should be thinking about some of the businesses that are outside of the village of Hardwick and how when the Yellow Barn and the Rail Trail go in, how we're going to at least have signage or connect those businesses to downtown. And maybe this individual could be a part of that conversation. Yeah, that's a good point. So um, what I've heard, Eric, is I can just let the individual know that um, the, the town wouldn't be in a position to uh, go forward with offering up a, a grant um, per this request, but we have some other ways we could maybe support. Is that what I heard? Yeah, like if if he had a wanted to do a grant and wanted a letter of support from the town or something like that. Okay. Okay, that's, uh, I just want to make sure that we had a um, you know, discussion at the uh, public yeah. level and some input from the board members just to make sure um, I anticipated yeah. that would be the uh, approach, but I just want to make sure you guys weighed in. Good. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense to me too. Okay, um, I don't think I've got anything else uh, from the uh, town manager's perspective. Um, and if I think of anything, I'll just bring it up. If, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and fire away. Yeah, thank you. I think that's that's a good update. Um, next, we have road foreman report given by Sean Fielder. Must be anticipating Tom is out. Yeah, um, Tom is out. That's a correct statement. So uh, we have had the you know the crews keep them busy with uh, very snow removal and uh, sanding, salting activities. So uh, everything's in good shape there. Um, we're doing really well on use of sand, meaning, you know, less than half, we're about halfway through salt similar. So knock on wood, we haven't had these freezing rain events like we've experienced these past couple of years. So that's really helped us out. So 
equipment seems to be running pretty decent. Um, I think I'll go ahead and just put this in now. Um, at previous meetings, Tom had mentioned uh, or was asked to do some additional research on uh, pricing and options for replacement of highway department truck number one. And we have some updated information. Um, Tom's actually uh, recommending that we go with an international HX620 and that would be for replacement of dump truck number one. Um, what we have on that is including our trade in, then we'd be looking at a cost of 145,739. And uh, so everybody is informed uh, what we have available and the capital fund for this truck replacement as of July 1st, 2021 would be 180,000. So again, the, uh, the funding amount quoted would be 145,739. Tom's recommendation and Tom manager's recommendation is um, board go ahead with authorizing and we can um, initiate um, getting this uh, rolling in regards to uh, purchasing. Is this one of the bigger trucks, one of the yes. full size? Yep. Yes. And is this uh, the utilizing the state bid price? I cannot answer that. Tom would have to answer that one. Uh, we're work. I know he's the the entities he's getting pricing from are, are part of that program, but I honestly can't say. Um, my understanding from information provided by Tom is uh, it this is a good price, but that doesn't imply it's the uh, state bid. Tom generally yeah. is looking at that information, though, Eric. Yep. Yeah, I know that there have been a few instances in the past where the state bid has helped us, but not always. Mm -hmm. Um, does anybody else have questions about the truck? Do we have time to talk about it as an agenda item next time? Or do we have to do something right away? Um, I mean, I, I, anything, I mean can, anything can wait, of course. And if we, you know, if you want to just get clarification from Tom, it's the one thing I didn't ask him about, unfortunately. I do know this, the next price that he had obtained from the businesses we are generally getting our trucks from was, uh, it was $30,000 north of that 145,000. Yeah, I mean, it's, it sounds to me like it's in the ballpark and on the lower end of what we've been buying trucks for the last few years. They aren't cheap and they do break down a lot. And the idea that we've been going with is that if you keep them on this um, rotation where you don't own them until they're super old, then you don't incur the big costs as they get super rusty and bigger components fail. But So yeah, and in, in response to Sherry's question, all I can say is just basically what Tom's given back to me, which is he is recommending the inter this particular truck. So that's all uh -huh. I could, you know, that's all I could say. It doesn't say if that's a state price. He had done some research um, prior to his break and he actually just got this over to us here the last, last couple of days. Yeah, and he um, <clears throat> had mentioned it before as well. And so you said he got other bids and this is- Other prices, yes other prices and this is the truck that, that he would like to get and it's also the lower priced one that's a correct statement so you're, you're looking for guidance from us basically to yeah, get to all, go for yeah. It. yeah that's correct given the amount of money here it's got to be cleared by the select board so it seems like we could i mean it seems to me we could go for it but we could just ask you to check and just double check that, that the state bid and price was taken into account and if it is go ahead and if it wasn't then come back next like board meeting that makes sense? yeah for the good of the for the good of the conversation we're not cutting the check in the next week or two right this is just getting the order placed and it's for delivery following july 1st so if you want to go that route you just outlined um this is addressing sherry and lucian's point you know, we can you can say yeah we'll get it rolling um, before we do so i can have tom validate and then just give us the you know any more detail you have in regards to is this definitely the best price i mean that's what we're trying to achieve here right you know, for, for the truck that we need. Yep. Yep. It sounds like it is if he already got other prices. Right. And he usually that's has. That's my understanding. And they, 
and I believe last time he was he was saying that this is the one they wanted because it is similar to another one they have that has been a good truck. Right. So do you so, want a motion? Is that what you want? Yeah, it'd be great to have a motion to yeah. go ahead with I'll that make, purchase. I'll make the motion that we go forward with this one just because it's Tom's recommendation and he does usually check the state bid, but can we just confirm that with him? Um, but I, I'm assuming that he has and mm -hmm. that this is the best um, deal that he sees out there. So I'll make the motion that we go ahead. Second. As a second, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> okay, I think that's everybody. Any nays? No, that, was, that was unanimous. Great, that's thank you, enough. everyone. I so did have a do, question. What, yeah, go ahead. Sean, I, I don't know if, if uh, Tom's mentioned it or not, but the <laughs> snow between um, between the side, you know, where you get out of your car on the street, on Main Street, usually they go through at night and they get that out of there, but it's really pretty bad. And now it's going to snow again. So I just wondered if he mentioned he's going to do that maybe tonight. Well, I know he's tonight. not because he's not around, but I can pass it along. I just, yeah, it's just going to get worse. But it's yep. super slushy because of that mess that we had, you know. So anyway. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pass. I'll pass along to the crew. It doesn't. I don't know their timing of when they would get to it, but I'll definitely pass it along to the crew, Sherry. Okay. Was that the end of the uh, of the highway report? Yep, that's the end. Awesome. Thank you. Um, next up is the police department report, and I believe Aaron Cochran's online. He was here earlier. Yeah, I'm still here. Yay. Um, all all right. right. We had uh, just a few things here. Um, started picking up some directed uh, foot patrols uh, through the village. Uh, I've been doing some of that um, through the day, uh, especially. Um, so uh, people may have seen some of the officers out there doing that. Uh, we started picking up some increase in traffic enforcement. Uh, I do have some officers that have already had their second COVID shot. Um, so we're really kind of excited to get back out there and really, you know, get back to work. Um, we, uh, you know, because of the, the proactive, um, policing we've been doing, we have picked up, you've probably seen in the paper, some additional uh, arrests as far as, um, people driving without licenses, et cetera. Uh, so that started to pick back up for us. Um, we just had uh, just had some major work done on one of our cruisers. Uh, wouldn't start for us. We'd had a battle over several weeks of once the weather got cold, it wouldn't start, etc. Um, they just replaced all of the uh, catalytic converters, which that's a dual exhaust vehicle, so two catalytic converters, a bunch of sensors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, luckily, under warranty, and that seems to be back running as it should. So. Uh, hopefully we're good there. Uh, one of the other cruisers uh, had a radio. We've been having a radio issue. Um, Burlington Communications came. The radio had shut down on us. They came and took the radio uh, to try and figure out what it was doing so they could repair it. Uh, they put in a spare radio in the meantime, so we weren't down a cruiser the whole time um, that the original radio was getting prepared and the spare radio quit so we're waiting for them to come up and put another spare in so that um we can put that car back on the road right now it's just a radio issue that's keeping it off the road but um so we've certainly had some uh you know cruiser issues um this year this winter so far but uh, we're trying to work through all those and trying to keep it on the road it seems like as soon as uh, one gets fixed another goes down and um but um, but we're working through, you know, through all that. The last one we're at down right now is just a radio issue. Uh, we do have actually one of the one of the other ones. Uh, we're waiting on a uh, O2 sensor um, that again was back ordered, and so they're trying to find one somewhere because uh, <laughs> we can't get it from the factory. So uh, it's just a simple O2 sensor. It runs fine, but 
um, it's throwing an engine code. So um, we're trying to, you know, trying to get that repaired, but it seems like that's kind of a frustrating uh, thing this winter has been cruisers. So um, that's where we're at, I guess, right now. Um, the, most of the rest of us get second shot tomorrow uh, for COVID. Um, so uh, that should be, we should be in pretty good shape, hopefully, as far as vaccinations go. Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah. Yeah. Not looking forward to the second shot. I've no several that have received it. I expect to be down for the weekend. Yep. But it, but it's not going to kill you. It's no, hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my intention. So, so yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll get through it. Yeah. Aaron, I have a, this is Kaylee. I have a quick random question. I was at Hazen yesterday. It's awesome that there are vaccines available at Hazen starting this week. I noticed that there was a county sheriff there and I was just curious if that is being if if that's something that he's under the state had organized. Yeah, it's a state contract um to have. I don't know what they're worried about, but um yeah, that is a state state contract uh, apparently with the sheriff's departments to provide security at COVID vaccination sites. Interesting. It looked to me like they were doing traffic when I was there, but. I don't oh, really? Know. Yeah. They're, they're, my understanding was they're supposed to be there for so-called security. I don't know what the worry is for COVID vaccinations, but, um, well, but yeah, you know, the seniors, it would have been nice if tough crowd. they had reached out. What's that? The seniors, they're a tough crowd. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. It would have been nice if they had reached out to, you know, towns that had, um, our, you know, police departments, it could have provided that would have been nice, but I'm sure they just wanted to have one contract and not have to make a bunch of phone calls. I, I, I don't know what the story there was. I know, it's a state contract. I know that. All right. Well, yeah, we don't know why they need security and we don't know why they used Omaha County. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Fair enough. Any other questions for Aaron? All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. All right. I'll so, talk to you a little later. <laughs> yes. Um, let me find my agenda. Where are we? Hardwick Electric report. And Mike Sullivan is here. I can see the little square. So, hello, all. Hello. Okay. Um, so, budgeting, we, uh, our purchase power uh, expenses are obviously our biggest. Uh, factor in our budget over 60 percent of our budget and last year uh, for 2020 we came in two percent under budget with 101 percent coverage on 3.4 million dollars which was near too perfect um, unfortunately in 2021 the budget is protecting projecting about a six percent increase in purchase power costs primarily in transmission fees to Green Mountain Power. And I know I've talked to you all about purchasing a section of Green Mountain Power line, and this is why I've been pushing on that project because I knew these increases were coming. Um, and we do actually, we received a PSA, a purchase and sales agreement uh, draft from GMP on that line section uh, Monday. So that's in review with the legal beagles and uh, on its way to becoming our property and reducing our costs. So should offset at least some of that projected increase in the coming year. Um, did you get my email, Eric, earlier today? I got it late, um, I'm sorry, yeah, so. Well, what, you, I'll just, if you don't mind me talking about that, I will. Go, you want go to for it. Another? Okay. So one of the items that uh, you were all going to follow up with my board of commissioners about was the timing of audits and what that really meant. And uh, Sherry had identified that it was a finding on your audits every year. And what does that really mean? And, and I had shared an email with Eric from... Uh, Jeff Graham of Graham and Graham 
He's our expert witness in the um, embezzlement litigation. And he basically said that it shouldn't uh, do any detrimental harm. He tried to think of a, of a possible instance where it might. And he said, you know, there could be an anomaly where uh, Hardwick Electra or Hardwick the town of Hardwick might miss out on a specialty interest rate or um, some promotional thing at a bank they might not be able to capitalize on, but uh, that would be an anomaly and it really shouldn't result in any detriment to the town at all. But I don't know if you, I don't know if you all discussed it further than that, or if you discussed it with your auditor or where it all landed, but it would be nice while you are all still full board and the full board and know about this and have discussed it, it would be nice if we could close it out. So that's, that was my goal. So I think that I was supposed to talk to our auditors when they were here around the time of that last meeting and I did not follow up. I think Casey did talk to them, um, but we don't have her online tonight unless Sean or Amanda knows. I could comment. Others. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we didn't get a chance to discuss uh, prior to receiving our audit report. So what we would have to do here moving forward is just uh, get our, you know, whoever's, it's Sullivan, sorry, it's uh, Sullivan Powers and Co. PC that's doing the town side. Um, seems to me it'd be valuable to have, uh, you know, Mike's consultant just, you know, we relay what Mike's consultant has come up with so that our auditors, you know, conducting the town side of things, just see, hey, here's what the opinion is of the folks from, you know, representing the electric department. Um, you know, so we get uh, just our auditors, they just continue to bring it up, just this timing issue. Yeah, that's yeah. it, that's it. In so Sean, right. Sean, have you, um... I mean, Sullivan Powers is an excellent firm, excellent reputation. They do great work. They're sought after. I've tried to get them to do our work for us. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the mandates under the regulatory realm we operate in is that our auditor, the one in charge of the proje project, has to be peer reviewed. Do you know if your team there at Sullivan is, is peer reviewed? I cannot answer that, Mike. You mean the, I'm not, team, I'm not the team or the audit? Uh, the, the guy, the actual auditor that signs off on our audit has to be peer reviewed, which I don't remember what peer stands for, but it's like, I'm an engineer. And if I do a engineering project for customer X, then I have to be reviewed in accordance with this team of engineers. And they pick apart examples of my work over the last year and grade me on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like a higher level for auditors. It, it costs a lot of money for them to get that certification, but they get a lot more training and they're a lot more defined in what they do. And Jeff is a peer reviewed CPA and he's actually on the board that does the reviewing of others. So he knows what he's talking about. Um, but yes. nonetheless, you guys need to be comfortable with your team over there. I, I just curious if, they are peer reviewed, I would expect they'd see it the same way. I can check into that. Yeah, we just we just need to ask them, like, what's the practical significance of this finding that you keep bringing up every year? Okay, so like I said, you, you guys are all up to speed on it and it would be nice yeah. if we could clean it up. I know at least one of you isn't rerunning or you know, some faces might change here in the next couple of months. So I think we have an opportunity to clean this one up. We ought to grab it. We will do our best. Okay, fair enough. Um, and lastly, um, the last bullet item I had, because Nat was supposed to be meeting with you tonight, but he called when he realized he had to get on a different board meeting up in Greensboro. So I jumped in. Uh, but the last one is on the library project, and um, I, my team is actually, actually I have one more before that, uh, HED is going through our second wave of COVID disaster. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, we had it here in the office 
three employees got infected and then our meter reader transferred it down to the warehouse so a bunch of the linemen got it um, but we've been through a 21 day process here and the quarantine for the last guys that are left ends this Saturday so then we'll be out of the woods somehow yeah. I've managed to test negative four times I don't know <clears throat> well done yeah so uh, with that going on uh, your guys that are running there trying to get the project rolling across the street here at the library um, have tried to connect with Brian, but he's in COVID quarantine. So uh, I was reviewing some of the engineer's drawings the other day uh, when he was chomping at the bit to get some approvals. And I just wanted to note to all of you, especially you, Sean, because you're probably the one that's going to have to follow up on it, but they're calling for a three phase 400 amp service for the library which in seems big yeah in practical terms that would fully run over 30 single family homes and i can't believe they need the energy for 30 single family homes in a library so you might want to look at that and uh, see if they could cut it down to a 200 amp inline service and it might save you some money are you, is is are you or Brian or somebody going to be in contact with them or? Yeah, Brian will probably have a meeting with them Monday or Tuesday on site. Yeah. Okay. But I just plant that seed for you guys and because. Mike, that, no, go ahead. That's Daily? in addition to the service they already have. Probably not. No, the service that they have will be removed, and the new one will be this. You know, I mean, it, literally enough to run a, a small uh, manufacturing facility, which is sim simply not the case. So I, I'm all about, you know, planning for the future, but this service, I believe, is really overkill and you're going to spend a lot of money on it that you really don't need to spend. So you ought to take a close look at it. That's all I'm saying. Mike, the, uh, the 200 amp you've referenced uh, with the existing infrastructure uh, near the building, that's basically hitch it up and add the transformer. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, either, either way, uh, mm -hmm. the work is not a big deal at all for us or, or on the other end. Mm -hmm. But the increased transformer size, the increased conductor size, you'd have to go with instrument transformer metering instead of an inline meter, which is a much expensive, more expensive socket, et cetera. Um, there's just some, there's some fat there that I think can be trimmed. Brian and I will uh, check in once, you know, he can keep in contact with me. We'll keep an eye on it, Mike. Yeah, I mean, if you guys are happy with it and, you, and your engineer says, oh, we need it because of X, that's great, but I'd take a good look at it. Okay, thank you. And with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Big motors. None, none from Aaron, though. <laughs> hey, this is Lucian. Um, I didn't get your, um, your, your board report <clears throat> from last, last month, I think it was. And um, I would wonder if you could just send that out. Sure, I will. It's, uh, I think it's because everybody was home COVIDing. And it probably yeah. ended up in Jessica's computer and didn't get out to everybody. Okay. Yeah, no problem. But yeah, I'll circle back and make sure you all get it. Mike, everybody's, uh, you got some people with, uh, you know, impacted it. I hope everybody's okay and they're recovering okay. Everybody's good. Yeah, we haven't had any uh, serious illness. It's been uh, pretty mild. Um, the spouse that, gave it to uh that originated it coming into the office here was actually very well and uh had to go out for treatments at the hospital multiple times it was really he was really sick but fortunately uh what we've had here is just you know a couple days of heavy cough and then coming out of it uh it's good no real fever no real no real health problem, just uh, uncomfortable more than anything. Good. Yeah, knock on I don't, think, I, I don't think it's fair. Mike won't let me talk. All right, you can talk to. <laughs> just because you're immunized. <laughs> well, Mike, Maybe you might get for some shots. 
now Mike's white his white blood cells are worth something on the market, I believe. Yeah, I can sell something. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, any other questions for Mike for Hardwick Electric? Well, we're well, we have them. All right. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up is item one, time, time manager to give an update on the Sunwise survey uh, research for River Street in East Hardwick. And that's in our packet, right, Sean? I think I saw it. Yeah, that's correct. And of course, I got to put my hands on it. Hang on one second. Uh, what the heck? I just had it up. Bear with me, folks. Well, I'm struggling with the technology right now. Okay, I think I, uh, as I say, I got it. Okay, so, um, sorry. So we did uh, a couple meetings back, the board authorized me to go ahead and um, engage with uh, research services with uh, Sunrise uh, Surveying. And uh, they did go ahead and conduct a little bit more investigation. Uh, sorry, taking a step back, uh, just trying to figure out you know, what is the standing of this area of uh, River Street? Uh, it's basically to the, I have my geography right, it'd be to the south of Main Street, uh, where Main Street crosses the Lamoille up in East Hardwick. So um, recall back in the fall, we had, you know, pretty significant round of discussions on this. And uh, there was uh, some thoughts that uh, maybe this would be a, uh, at some point was deemed a public highway, uh, a town highway. So um, what the board authorized me to do is just go forward with having Sunrise Surveying conduct some additional research. We do have a, uh, we got a two page, uh, one and a half page report that had been provided by Sunrise Surveying. There's some details here in regards to a number of the lots in the area. And what I will do is um, we'll make sure that uh, this particular item is listed as an attachment to the minutes. So, you know, anybody wants to see this, they would be able to see the report, but I'll hit the highlights here. Um, uh, what it indicates in the second paragraph is, um, although our research at this time of the report cannot be considered comprehensive, we found no indication that River Street was ever considered a town highway. This being noted, uh, this is my commentary, but this is back to the specific document notation. We have not undertaken work that would appear to have been already completed by various other uh, and other knowledgeable people as to the status of River Street. We've not researched town highways in streets volume or the general indices looking for record layout for River Street. I also point out that plat completed by Wayne Mutrix, uh, a map that's in our land records reference number 309A notes this lack of record layout. So uh, the point there is, uh, Sean's commentary now, the point there is that the lack of a record layout for a public highway is just in this research phase indicating doesn't appear to be anything to codify this as a public highway. Um, um, there's, there's one other piece of information they do talk about here and I'm not, uh, to be fair to the commentary, I'm not reading back the full piece. I'm, and I'm, I am trying to hit the objective comments here, but it also notes, um, property belonging to the gravels and, uh, recall there are a couple lots in, um, as described in a deed, uh, without reference and date and page of the Hardwick land records it joins the East Hardwick fire department land. When land was conveyed to the gravels uh, by the previous owner, um, it outlined um, that the, uh, the buyers retained a right of way through the property, which would indicate they thought they had those rights, not a public highway, but a right of way. This would have been uh, referenced as River Street, but not in the context of a public highway. So it seems unlikely that those rights, this is again from the letter, it seems like unlikely that those rights would have been deeded if the, if the road were thought of as a town highway. Um, the closing paragraph, uh, with the amount of research completed to date, I'm unable to say what other parcels might have been conveyed from root parcel, but it would seem to me that the area of scrutiny, we understand uh, the record, boundary, um, record boundaries of the parcels. In my opinion, the land under River Street belongs to East Hardwick Fire District, whether or not the fire department property or any other parcels have a deeded easement to use River Street. 
the East Herdwick Fire Department um, owns the land under the roadway, and I'm reading it verbatim. So this is signed off by uh, Lisa Gannett, who's a registered land surveyor. Again, just what we'd asked of her is just additional research. So that's what we have in the report. There's two one and a half page letter, cover letter, one and a half page letter, and uh, some map reference. I have not read through the entire item comprehensively, but generally uh, what we're getting for an indication is nothing that would indicate a public highway. So that's what has been provided by Sunrise Surveying. Kaylee. Just a quick question, Sean. As of right now, this um, has the survey been communicated to any other parties or is it just to the select board? Just at the select board level at this phase. The, uh, I did put um, uh, East Hardwick Neighborhood Organization. I did update them uh, yesterday that we would be discussing the item uh, tonight, but I hadn't shared the report with anybody else. Um, just board and now it's public, of course. So in some ways it seems to me that this is echoing some of the other research that we've, the town's done or other people we've heard from, some of them have done. Yep. And, uh, Although it's interesting to note that the, um, the, Lisa thinks that the land under the road is owned by the uh, fire district. Um, I hadn't gotten that far when I was poking around, so. Right. I think that is the most interesting part. I heard Sherry, but I didn't hear Wiz. Go ahead, Sherry. I think the fact that she's citing that the the fire district owns the land underneath the road um, is the most important part. Uh, I think that was fairly, we knew going in that it wasn't a public highway, a town highway or a public highway or whatever. We knew that. What we were trying to get at was whose whose land was it, and it seems like that's a the most pertinent part of that whole report is that that she believes that the land is the fire district. So now the fire district would potentially take the next steps. No. Why not? Wiz, what were you going to say? My question is, what are the input? What power do you have over a piece for which you have in effect a deeded right of way? Does that, can you treat it like your own um, driveway or is it that you can't be kept from using it while other people are using it? So I'll give my very, <laughs> my understanding, which Eric's legal advice, you know, you get what you pay for. But I think that it's um, my, my interpretation of a right of way is they're typically for ingress and egress. They can be explicitly described for other things like there was one in that chain of title, which was a right of way for moving lumber when there was a sawmill back there. But typically you have a right of way for ingress and egress and that allows you to travel over that land, um, you know, on foot in your vehicle. But I, but typically, I, I, my understanding is you shouldn't block that right away. It doesn't become yours. And it doesn't you become, don't become your property. That no. you don't control what other people do in that right of way as long as you have, no. as long as you can get through. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Well, some right of ways are, are, I think, called bounded, where they, they're actually laid out, which it sounds like this one might not be. And what, what would, would that, could, be, could it be an exclusive right away if it were bounded, Lucian? No, but I'm just saying that, um, that, that it might prescribe where somebody else could do something or not. Like if it was a bounded right of way, then you, you know, even the fire department couldn't park the car in the middle of it because they'd have the right to go in and out all, at all times on that. But if it's not bounded, then, I, then, then it, might be, it might be somewhat movable as long as they can get in and out kind of deal. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yep. like if, the, if the fire department, for instance, said that, that um, one of these other properties could park their cars on it and it'd be okay, that might make a difference at whether it was, it was you know, actually laid out or not. It sounds like this one isn't because I haven't heard anybody mention it, but I don't know. Yeah, it seemed, I, I didn't see any, in the, the little bit of reading I did, I didn't see any of deeds that had a reference to actually laying out a right away. So in some ways it sounds like it's, it's, 
I mean, basically, what this is saying is that it's not really have doesn't really have anything to do with us, other than the the town's general interest in not having properties that are, you know, you know, somewhat useless because they don't have any parking or access or anything. Right. But, but it's kind if, of the, the details is out of our hands in a lot of ways. Yeah. So Kaylee, you had your hand up. I was just going to say that it sound it sounds like what the the two landowners would need to do that came to the last meeting would be to basically talk to the East Herbert Fire Districts the same way that Norm allegedly talks to them about use of the land for parking. Is that what, that's what this seems to be reading, that yeah. it's really a conversation between that party, which is not a part of the town of Hardwick and the private landowners. Yeah, so the, the fire district is a quasi municipal corporation. And so, and in fact, um, folks in who are part of that um, geographic area in East Hardwick that in which the fire district exists um, should be notified of an annual meeting of the district at which the officers are elected. Um, so it, sh it should all be public, very not unlike a ta our town meeting for the whole town. It's exactly right. like the town meeting for the whole town. Okay. <laughs> so I think however you slice it, it's pretty much out of our hands at, at the moment. Other yeah, I mean, the one way, are. yeah, I mean, the one, the, the only way I see that it's, you know, that that I would see a role for us to play is it would be a pretty heavy handed one, which would be if we deemed that the, it was in the um, best interest of, uh, of everyone that that River Street become a ta uh, actual town road and that we, you know, would lay out a town road and, you know, take, I guess, you know, take property by eminent domain. I mean, it, it seems a bit heavy handed and, and um, my understanding is there, there's a bit of a legal onus to prove that it's, um, you know, that's necessary. Yeah, I don't want to well, kick a bee's that, nest. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Lucian. Well, I was gonna say before, before the, something like that got taken, negotiations could just take place. I mean, if the, if, if the select board decided that it was in the public good to create a road there, um, that, then I guess we could talk to the East Hardwick Fire District and they might be like, yeah, that's fine with me. And, and um, gravel might be fine with that too, if we're gonna plow it and take care of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but I don't know that that passes Before you get into eminent domain. Of, yeah. I'm sorry, what? I don't know that that passes the test of, of serving the public good necessarily, as I guess. Yeah, would... I'm not arguing for it either. I'm just saying okay. that, that, that there could be, could be a less draconian step before eminent domain gets invoked. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that the, the most, Right, the most logical step would be to have folks, concerned parties discuss it with East Hardwick, um, with fire district number one, I think it is. Yeah. And well, we should... I think this was good that we did this. I mean, it does it does add to the, yeah. you know, substance of the conversation. People can look at a real map of what, you know, what a real surveyor thinks is happening on the ground, you know, up to a point. Yeah. So I'm glad that we did this, even though it kind of, you know, was a little bit of a circuit, you know, chasing our tail a little bit. But. The only other thing I was going to mention is that the other party that's um, involved with these discussions is obviously the one that was uh, what kind of brought this all up, the entity that was trying to sell the, the house right there on the corner. So, uh, you know, they're, they're obviously going to be a part of these discussions moving forward as well. Mm -hmm. Um you know, what, what were their expectations? You know, how did they use the space in the past? I think these points matter <clears throat> in regards to, it's just, hey, let's figure out how we can make this work, right? I mean, that's generally where we're at right now, not with the town implicating, here's how you do it. Right. Right, right. And I just have a really quick process question. It sounds like you are already communicating with Eno about this and probably the fire district. Are we going to be sharing this survey with the three landowners on that street, or is that really up to them to ask for that information? 
Um, just for a clarifying point, Kaylee, um, I just updated East Hardwick Neighborhood Organization, so they were aware this was being discussed, but hadn't taken any action to get the report to the fire district, but I can obviously get it to uh, representatives from both of those groups, so they have it. Maybe they can are you in their meeting. But... Sorry. Sean are, Sean, are you in communication with us? Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but Sislicky and Toysier and Gravel? No, I don't know if it's um, if you have their email, it might be worth telling them about it, disappointedly. But if you don't, then that may well, they're th those are the those were the uh, potential buyers. Is that do I have it? I'm no, sorry, I lost track. Landowners. This, those are oh, the sorry. current owners that don't have any parking. Yeah. Yes. Um, my apologies. Yeah, I had oh, no. um, I had talked to the current owner, one of the representatives, a while back. So uh, I'd be glad to uh, get the information of that party as well, Lucian, if that's the ask. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like a, a decent role we could play is just to make sure everybody's got the information and, you know, n nudge them towards talking to each other, <laughs> working it out. We could, yeah, I mean, it might be worth just mailing it if we don't have email for them. We do have mailing addresses on the, um, you know, for, for the property owners. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can get a whole, I know toys your. What, Kaylee? I think I have almost Barbara, everybody. It's Barbara. I don't know if Mark and Stella have one, but I I can get it. If that's it's helpful. Barbara, right? Is it Barbara? Um, yeah. So let's keep, I've got Barbara's yeah. contact information. Okay. Great. Yeah. If I don't have it, I'll reach back out to y'all. Sean, they're also asking about the other property owners on that street, like Gravels. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it'd be good to make sure that Gravel has the information we have to okay we'll get it distributed to everybody that's referenced is that good yeah okay That'd be great and the fire district whoever those uh yeah uh, i've got uh eno east hardwick the current owners of that corner lot that spurred the discussion and then uh you know anybody else that might be referenced in the report yeah and i think by default though they probably unless they have set a different date i think the fire district annual meeting by default was January sometime. Remember they, have, they have ongoing meetings though. It's not necessarily their annual meeting, but they've got regularly oh. scheduled meetings. So they can, uh, the yeah. Prudential Committee does meet on some time to basis. So they'll get, you know, I get Doug um, uh, Casvant is who I am in contact with for the yep. fire district. So I'll get it over to him. Good. Great, John. Thanks for that. Yeah, Good. thank you. All right, so um, I will. Uh, we uh, we'll get our work closed out with Sunrise, and um, we'll get that. We'll just let them know we're we're good at this phase. And thanks for the work. Just so we close out the discussion here. Sounds good. Um, I lost my agenda. So that was item one. Item two: Select Board to um, authorize the bond banks financing. So this is for the um, wastewater plant improvements, correct? It's for no. a fire truck, isn't it, Alberta? Is, no, this is actually for the um, fire. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sean. I'm sorry. I was thinking about what Eric said, not listening to what you said. I apologize. Yes, this is for the fire truck. Uh, so you okay. guys have actually all come into my office already and signed this. Um, and then when I shipped it off to Paul Giuliani, he wrote back and said, oh, you missed a step, which I never saw in his letter. So, um, but you guys actually need to have a vote that says, yes, you approve moving forward with financing this bond. Could we have a motion to that effect? I move that we approve moving forward with this bond. I'll second it. Any more discussion? We've been in favor of the fire truck for a while. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Haley, did you aye? Okay. That's, that's, every, that's all five saying aye. aye. So that's good. Motion, motion carries. Thank you. Perfect. That Thank you. I'll put a new date in there and send it back out tomorrow. No, no signatures because they're already processed, right, Alberta? Right, exactly. We'd already done this step before 
I realized that he wanted an actual vote saying yes. So details. All right. So are we done? Are we done <laughs> with that one this time? That one's done. Okay. Yep, we'll, we'll all done. We'll, Completely until done. next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next is also Alberta. This is Select Board to discuss and approve various liquor licenses. And she gave us quite a list. Um, where, uh, and I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is. Alberta, are there any problems with any of these licenses? None, whereas we have had nothing from the Department of Liquor Control on any of them. Well, could we just have a blanket motion to to approve all the applications for liquor licenses? We could, but can I read them? That works for me. Yeah, I was just going to ask who, who they are, that's all. Yeah, let me read them. So, um, oh. sorry, tonight. Aaron, I forgot to include you. Oh, yeah, that's fine. All right, so a first class license for RBI Hardwick LLC doing business as Positive Pi Hardwick. Second class licenses for, and there are four of them, Buffalo Mountain Co-op, uh, M&M Beverage, uh, Hardwick Quick Stop and Deli, and Hardwick Village Market. Third class license, license for Positive Pi again, and an outside consumption permit for Positive Pi. There's a total of five entities. All good, all good, Aaron? Uh, all good with me, yeah, we haven't had any issues there. Okay. I um, move that we approve the class licenses for the said businesses. Second. All in favor, please say, oh wait, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's five eyes. So the eyes have it. Thank you. Um, next, we have item four, select board to authorize letter of support for USDA RBDG pedestrian bridge replacement grant application. That's a mouthful. Um, and that Letter of support. Do, do. Sorry, I'm jumping around screens trying to find files to give you some narratives here, Eric. So good. Um, yeah, I'm looking for it as well. I I thought. Yeah, this. Uh, I think that's out of order on the agenda. That should read as. Um, better connections. Yep, yeah, uh, better yeah, connections and the small scale grant. So. If we can just adjust accordingly. Sorry, so, I missed that. Okay, so this is the this is actually the VTrans bike peed program small grant. That one. Yep, that's that's correct. And then I'll I'm going to tag on a uh, just trying to get the board to back the uh, better connections grant. Both of these being due tomorrow. Great. So um, the actually this. Um, uh, the 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 VTrans um, bike pedestrian grant was a new one to me. That project. So the project there is to repair and replace sidewalks on Church Street, correct? Yeah, and to include Maple Street. So all the way from the intersection of North Main, uh, both sides of the street. They're paved now. The objective would be to get those improved um, uh, out through Maple up to the intersection of the LVRT crossing where Slap Hill starts. These sections were identified as a part of the AARP uh, walkability study. That was a subset of uh, planning commission representatives that did this study and said this is an area that definitely needs some improvement. Yeah, and it is because right now there's one side of that road where they can't plow the sidewalk in the winter because it's not mm -hmm. sufficient to get through. And so on, on this, you want me to just give a little more narrative here? Yeah, Eric? please, go ahead. So on this particular grant opportunity uh, with Vermont Agency of Transportation, it's a 50-50 match. 
And we are able, uh, I've, I've discussed with Tom and we've gone over some details. What we're able to do, offer up uh, for some in-kind support on this is uh, town crew would be assisting with pull out uh, removal and uh, get rid of the existing pavement um, curbs and whatnot that are there. So that would be our in-kind match. And then uh, what we would do uh, with our labor and equipment that we've been able to put toward the in-kind match if we add on uh, $6,120 out of our sidewalk capital improvement fund, what that allows us to potentially go after is a project worth uh, $81,720. So it's a really good opportunity. I think we have a pretty sound application here. Um, it would be using uh, the town's time and equipment it's not taking them away from anything else as far as summer projects are concerned. It aligns well with the walkability study and using, um, you know, if we only have to take 6,100 out of our sidewalk improvement fund to get a significant improvement like this. Sorry, I didn't point this out. The intent is to uh, go forward with a uh, concrete sidewalks uh, in these areas, which just would be standing up much better to, um, you know, frost action would help us on ADA access and compliance. Um, I think everybody here has observed folks having trouble walking these areas if you have any kind of a mobility issue. And um, it's, you know, there's definitely a need. Uh, another important point, I just want to make sure this isn't lost in translation. Um, we are um, in another uh project category, we're, we're kind of trying to lump this in now with um, the pedestrian bridge replacement project. What we're going to try to do is uh, we know we need some improvements from the sidewalks from Memorial Park, uh, where LVRT crosses, going all the way down into the village area to, uh, to and getting to the pedestrian bridge. So what we're going to do is work, um, you know, those needed improvements in as a part of that project. And I've already actually discussed this with the uh, USDA contact. Uh, recall, we've talked about doing a shift of our LVRT improvement, previously uh, received award. And the uh, contact at USDA said, this would, this really helps to sync these and you know just helps uh, uh, cover the argument that this is a really good readjustment and use of the LVRT improvement grant to improve the bridge, but also improve uh, whether it's a bike lane or the sidewalks, you know, we're going to try to make this, you know, really uh, good access going from the trail into the village area. So uh, what the uh, objective is with the um, PED uh, bicycle and pedestrian program is that um, the board uh, just uh, authorized me to submit um, on behalf of the town a letter of support and it's um, the, it's the Hardwick Board is offering our support for the Town of Hardwick's application to Vermont Agency of Transportation Bicycle and Pedestrian Program for the small scale grant. This project will implement much needed sidewalk improvements for the intersection uh, from the intersection of Church Street and Main Street, continuing to the intersection of Maple Street and uh, Lamar Valley Trail, uh, providing service to Hardwick Village residents, visitors, and LBRT users. Uh, the letter does reference the uh, AARP study. And then in closing, it says, with that understanding, we hereby commit to 40,860 of in-kind uh, in the form of construction related costs. That would be again, our team and equipment costs calculated. And then the $6,130 out of the uh, sidewalk line item for cash match. Uh, plus we would uh, obviously be doing future upkeep. So this grant, the total grant ask is 81,720. And we believe these monies will support the ongoing effort by the town to further a more walkable, safer, and equitable community. So I'm asking the board to uh, authorize town manager to go ahead and sign off and submit this letter as part of the application going in tomorrow. Any I, think it sounds, Any I think it sounds great, but it seems a little odd to me that that we're submitting a letter of support to our own grant application. But. Yeah, it's just one of those things that um, sometimes you don't do it, but um, uh, we're just trying to really polish this one, if I could put it that way. So um, Jeff's thoughts were, why don't we just go ahead and just include this? And it just shows, hey, we got the backing of our board and we're really honed in on this and just polishes the application. So uh, Eric, I think you're onto something, but we're just trying to bring it to another level here. The planning commission also submitted a letter as the planning commission, so. Yeah. Just trying to show a way we're bringing it from all angles and we're backing this. 
Okay. So Great. town manager supports, uh, Tom supports as well for the good of the conversation. Uh, motion to do that. <laughs> the, mo the motion that, that we we support the project and authorize Sean to sign the letter of support. Mm -hmm. For both of those, the better connections and the LVRT by trans bike ped. B trans bike pedestrian small grant. Right, that. And so the, the, sorry, so I know this is muddling your motion, Cherry, but we didn't, did we discuss the better connections grant? We did. I thought oh. we did. Well, not, not a lot of details. That's the here. one that kind of goes, that kind of goes from, uh, from Church Street down into downtown that kind of connects the bridge, no? Yeah, so maybe could we do, just for clarity for me, could we do, a, could, could you redo your motion so it's just for um, this letter of support first and then we'll do the better connections one second? Okay. Is that right? Yeah. That would, that would help me. <laughs> So right so, now we're just dealing with West Church Street and Maple Street. Church yeah. Street, Church Street uh, clarification. Church Street uh, up to the depot intersection. From there, it changes to Maple, and that brings this us is, up to LVRT. So this Church is the V Trans Bike Ped Connect uh, LVRT grant that we're submitting a letter of support for. I'll read it back. The actual reference is Bicycle and Pedestrian Program Small Scale Grant, uh, Town of Hardwick. That. Okay, so we're we're voicing our support and ask and authorizing Sean to sign the letter of support on our behalf. So we have a motion. I I'll second. second it. No, oh, well that was close. I don't know who. Give it to Wiz. Lucian. We'll give it to Lucian, I guess. Uh, either way, good. Okay. Um, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so that's that's everyone. So that's all five uh, unanimous. So that's great. And then Sean for the better connections. Um, what what do you need from us? For that because we yeah, don't have a um we don't need uh we don't need letter it's not the same format on this particular yep. one but just um on the better connection uh sorry better connections grant application um what we're doing is uh, just read back real quick from a portion of the uh, pro uh project purpose uh focus on smart growth and complete street ideologies and um oh, basically what, what does that mean what is complete street ide ideology Process will include, uh, I'll just keep reading. Um, what we're looking at is uh, include proactive community engagement strategy and process with a keen eye to be inclusive of uh, underserved populations. What we're looking at with a, a, a significant involvement of the planning commission and their supportive is developing a community transportation plan to meet the needs of the town uh, to uh, be thoughtful, equitable and provide for sustainable growth, growth of the community, excuse me. Um, uh, it's just basically, you know, like we've had the A, just going off script now, we've had the ARP study recently, we've had the pedestrian and traffic safety task force study. What we want to do is just bring it to that next level. And what this actually would involve is uh, working with a consultant as well as our regional planning commission to, uh, you know, pull together uh, these various studies, these various thoughts and uh, really do a, a community engagement process, uh, you know, with planning commission playing a pretty significant role to get the capital plan in order on these things. We got a lot of moving parts now, right? With yep. uh, these various projects that we're talking about and we're just trying to get a handle on, let's really make sure we understand the various issues in regards to transportation and pedestrian and bikes and walking. And therefore, uh, you know, with, with this support on the planning phase, we get ourselves in a position to, all right, what are the best way we can implement improvements for the good of everybody involved? I mean, that's it what? in a nutshell that and it, it potentially supports some of the recommendations that are already in place but with a little more process around it from the pedestrian yes. tra traffic safety group lucian i'm feeling a little confused about this i've got there's too much alphabet soup going on for me and i'm not i haven't been very involved so i'm a little confused so um it, are, is this in our folder so i can follow along um 
yes, and maybe this would help if I could, uh, Lucian, if I could read back just what we have identified as the, the narratives are pretty lengthy, but I think this might be valuable if I read back what our planned deliverables are for the proposed project. That would take maybe a couple minutes here at most. Would that be good to just hit those highlights? Sounds good. Okay, so uh, what we have in the grant uh, proposal for deliverables, number one, facilitate community process designed to engage the hardwood community more fully with particular eye on community driven transportation plan that integrates ideologies of smart growth and complete streets. Um, number three, develop visual aids to assist the community in imagining key parts of the plan. So obviously some visuals as a part of this process. Our expected outcomes are one, officially adopt community driven trust transportation plan. Number two, an inclusive, develop an inclusive, sustainable, thoughtful, <clears throat> equitable, and environmentally thoughtful approach to multimodal development and infrastructure in Hardwick. Number three, improve safety for users of the roads and bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. Number four, community and municipally driven action stemming from this project's community engagement process and resulting plan. And five, more equitable, diverse, and welcoming community. There's a lot there. Um, it's a pretty significant grant proposal, but those are just some of the goals and outcomes that we're trying to achieve. Okay, so um, I guess, I guess, so I, so we have the grant that's that's, um, that's doing um, East Church Street and Maple Street, yep. and then we we have a we have a grant already that's going to connect basically. My my I'm just asking this actually. Do we have a grant already a while ago that's connecting um, basically from the electric department um, down to Main Street with different kinds of infrastructure to like like bike racks and things like that to help people get people down from the LVRT? Is that right? That's correct statement. That's a separate. Okay, and that grant's already already been applied for and everything right and, and received is that right uh, we had received a, a vorec grant for some bike racks and uh, information kiosks so we have um you know we've already done we've already received and we're already implementing on a few projects and i think the way i need to respond right now lucian uh, is to say you know what we're what we're doing now is yes we have some things in the pipeline we're trying to achieve some things because we've got good opportunities on some pretty decent grant support what we yeah. want to do is just I'm Go not ahead. challenging that. I'm just trying to no, no, figure no, out what grants yeah. we have, what grants we're applying for, and what they're for. I just, I yeah, just understood. Follow. Yeah, no, so I'm, this grant. I'm, yep. Go so, ahead. So, so, so those grants are separate grants, and then this grant is like a planning grant. Is that right? That's correct statement. This is a planning okay. phased uh, thing. That is correct. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm understanding it better. I think now. Sorry. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. Those uh, those things that I read back, um, you know, I know Eric had pointed out, uh, like on the small scale grant, it just it was just getting on the windscreen, and these things were just getting, you know, we're just getting them in process uh, and in a position where we could get them in front of you all. I'm sorry I didn't have a little bit more time to get them in front of you, but we have had some conversations uh, with uh, Planning Commission referencing now the Better Connections grant. They're supportive. Uh, Jeff's had in uh, conversations with our regional planning commission. So uh, I see it as a valuable endeavor. Um, so we're going after on the planning grant. It's not insignificant. We're, we're trying to achieve $75,000 uh, of project. And what we're going after is 67,500. Uh, and that would imply that we would use 7,500 uh, of uh, local cash uh, to support this endeavor. Um, so, you know, that's that's something that's obviously uh, needs to be referenced here. You know, if we were to get the award, 67,500 is a pretty good award, obviously, but we would have to use some of our local monies in this planning uh, exercise. So we uh, we have that money available um, in uh, our capital planning areas, and it would be something that uh, would be kicked off. Um, the awards probably wouldn't be uh, made until we get into the next fiscal year for good of conversation. So that's what I have for some of the highlights. So uh, it sounds like a fairly sizable amount for a planning grant, right? Yeah, the intent is that we actually, um, we would be uh, working with a consultant um, to provide services on this particular one. It wouldn't be handled um, 
you know, our existing staff are, uh, we're at our capacity and that's not an excuse yeah, or, yeah. you know, a negative thing. So we, it is really to work with a consultant and honestly to work with somebody who's an expert in uh, planning, um, uh, planning. We don't have anybody picked out as of right now, but that's the objective. And so this, this would be a town wide thing for the, just the downtown or be all the way around or town wide. Okay. Sherry, I don't know if you want to offer anything else, you know, a little bit about this. Uh, I think we've probably covered everything. I mean, sure, that's fine. Townwide, even possibly East Hardwick. You never know. Oh, I think that's a separate fire district. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's the uh, assumption would be we'd probably work with someone from NVDA. And yeah, that's a correct statement. East Hardwick um, Village and uh, various parts of town are highlighted uh, at various points in this narrative. So. The intent is to be working with everybody. It is a town wide sidewalk um, issues everywhere. There's yeah. all kinds of stuff everywhere that this could address some of it. We're trying we... to cover the entire geography. Okay. So, okay, so how so... much is the town putting in again? What's the what's the dollar figure? The the, the town's match would be seven thousand five hundred. Okay. And the, and the total cost was how much? The grant the total project cost is seventy five thousand. Oh, okay. So you'd be putting in. 10% or a little less than 10% of the project. Right. That's correct. And it makes a little more sense to me now that, that I hear that it's for the entire town. I was thinking just for the downtown area and that sounded like kind of a lot of money, but if we're also looking at the whole town and the East Hardwick village, then it seems a little more, more in line with what I would expect, I guess. Yeah, and in the in the narratives here, Jeff's uh, done his you know he's done a lot of networking and research. So we're you know we're pulling in uh, East Neighborhood Group, the Planning Commission, uh, Center for Ag Economy, Atkins Field, um, you know LVRT, um, you know the task force work to date. Um, not just anybody uh, in East Hardwick or the village, uh, downtown village area, but also, you know, other folks in our community, you know, it's, there, there's other folks in our community that this, this uh, planning project would be beneficial for, right? Again, we're talking about the entire geography. We got homebound folks, we have folks with transportation needs. It's really trying to get a handle on everything that we could potentially do to improve the situation across the board, have a decent plan to make improvements. It's somewhat haphazard right now. I think everybody would agree. Yeah. Totally. So, so this is um this isn't just just pedestrian. This is this is transportation pedestrian and uh, all transportation all put together. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. My modal. <laughs> yeah, and that the whole complete streets thing that they reference several times is this idea that streets aren't just for cars. That there are right. other modes of transportation that can happen. Right. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to starting to get it. I think now. So, okay, so. But we we're not doing any letter support or anything for this. So, so we, have we talked about this one? Are we ready to go to the next thing? Just, just. Uh, so, don't ask me why I'm not doing a letter support on this one. Uh, Jeff's got the the reins on this, and he just said, "Hey, can you just get the board to say, yeah, we're in support of this, and then he'll reference it." So we need a motion to that effect. I think because it needs to be in our minutes that we discussed it and we um, and that we voted to support it. It's the uh, 20, 2021 Better Connections grant application. And what we have for a project title is Connect, Move, Together, Hardwick. What does so that moved? It's just a little like reference point it's just a little it's not a big deal the yeah. project title it's what he taught it's what he calls it oh i don't have an issue with that it's all yeah. good that's what it is it makes no sense to me whatever but it doesn't have to i think <laughs> it's a good project but if i were a grant if i were reading a grant application and that was the title i would be completely baffled as to what this is about you read the rest of the grant proposal and you, you know, you find out what it's about, but the title doesn't tell you. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. But that's what we pay Jeff for, so he, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but we pay Wiz to keep us it, communicating using the English language. <laughs> 
Well, so I, dare dare really I can. ask, dare I ask, what is he read on in the narratives, right? I did not read the entire narrative, no. The the project that you read, I mean, you read <laughs> so you understand a little bit though, am I wrong? Once I got into it, but the title itself doesn't tell me anything. So it doesn't have to change it, it's due tomorrow. Right. Uh, if I was gonna complain about this, I should have done it last week when it was changeable. I'm just saying that it, it sounds like one of those things that public relations people came up to and thought was just charming, but it doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um, I don't know if Lucian was gonna say something, were you? Um, no. Okay, so I think Sherry made a motion that we support this grant. I don't think I heard a second. I'll second it. Even with the title? Even with the title. It's too late to, to turn around on it, but I just want to be on record that the title makes no sense. All right, so so we have a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion about, about this grant or the planning grant? So all in favor of supporting the planning grant, even with the title, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's everybody. Thank you. So, Sean, you can tell Jeff that, that we support the grant with the caveat that Wiz doesn't like the title. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a valid point, but probably doesn't matter in this I world. I like for words to mean something. Yeah. You know, particularly when you're putting them together as, as you know, <laughs> a collection of words, they should say something. <laughs> picky, picky. All right. Uh, Abstract. <laughs> oh, geez. It's, yeah, it's too late and I'm too hungry and I'm getting punchy. All right. So uh, I would move us along if I could find the agenda. Hang on. There it is. Item five. Item five uh, select board to review and appoint an equity committee candidate. So we have it, we're getting so many candidates. It's great. Mm hmm. So we have a letter um, of interest from Audrey Grant. Audrey has come to the select board several times over the last couple of years with, with um, um, I don't know, just come for it to inform us, to offer support for things. And um, so I think we've all seen her and talked to her. Yep. I just have yeah. a quick point of clarification, Eric. So Alexandra Jump, who was appointed in our, at uh, our last meeting for personal reasons has stepped down from the committee. So Audrey would be taking her position as, because she's no longer a Harvick resident. So there's still seats available for Harvick residents, but Audrey would be filling the non Harvick resident seat. Oh, Audrey's not in Hardwick? No. Oh, I didn't know that. Currently living Moved in- Moved to Craftsbury. Oh my goodness, way out there. Oh, yeah well at least she's not in like where school is which is virtual right now. oh in the ether in massachusetts somewhere careful yeah. what you say <laughs> ether um all right so thank you for that point of clarification that is important um all right so uh, so, so appointing Audrey to that seat would would fill that last seat that's open to non Hardwick residents. Okay. So I nominate or I make a motion that we appoint Audrey to the Equity Committee. I'll second that. Do we have um, do people have more discussion? I enjoyed her letter. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, that's everyone. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Audrey, for your interest. And um, that's great. So I'm going to move us to item six, select board to review and appoint a candidate for the planning commission. So as discussed earlier in the meeting, we don't, we don't have a letter in our packet, but um, it, the candidate is Sherry Cornish. That's my bad. I'm sorry I didn't get uploaded. I lost track of it. My apologies. Sherry, do you want do you want to tell us why you want to be on the 
planning committee and you're not on mute. You want me to read my letter aloud or something? Or just tell um, us why you want to be on the planning committee. I just, um, I'm participating so much on in their meetings. I'm going to the meetings. I'm very interested in what they're working on. And so I felt like it was a, a way that I could continue to work on my interests in helping Hardwick. And they do have uh, two, two seats open that have been open for some time. So there's still one more seat. Anybody out there? Does anybody have uh, questions for Sherry about her interest in the planning commission? I move we appoint Sherry to the planning commission. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And Sean, Kaylee was an eye. For... <laughs> What's that? Kaylee? Just so we can read it. I was asking huh? Sean if he could share the, if he could add the letter to, to our folder so we have it for future reference. Or yeah, for... I, I just found it and I just uploaded it. And Great. Um, again, my apologies, Sherry. I lost track of that one. So it is in the uh, right. folder, everybody. Does it have a good title? I did a little letterhead and everything, just saying. <laughs> Wiz, are you going to stand for that? <laughs> you are. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate your interest in the. You know, as you noted, the planning commission has been a little a little light on staff here for for members for a little while. So it's great. Well, and since I'm working with them anyway, I might as well be a member of the committee. Might as well join yeah. them. I can hear you guys. All right. Great. So. Um, awesome. That's through. We're through to select board reports, new business, old business. I just have one quick question about our board folder, Eric. There is another request in there for um, AMR. Is that supposed to be in our board folder? Yeah, oh, yeah I'm glad you just caught that because we missed this on the agenda. We're supposed to do a, uh, I'm sorry, folks, it's been a heck new business. Time. Yeah, new business. Um, we have a, um, let me just read it. Thank you. I was just looking at that. I'm glad you caught that, Kaylee. We have a request from um, All Metals Recycling um, out on uh, Route 15. It's application for certificate of approved location of a salvage yard. So every, uh, I think it's every five years, they're obligated to do the filing uh, with the state of Vermont for their uh, permit application. And what they are obligated to do is to get the um, board uh, to approve of this. So uh, I've checked in with uh, Kristen and everything is in order, uh, you know, in regards to their activities. We're not aware of any um, uh, violations of operations in regards to the state laws. Um, so it's uh, it, it, this application for certification is addressed to the select board. Um, and uh, what it is asking for, again, is just to sign off um, that uh, this is a permitted activity. So, uh, you know, authorization from the board that this is a permitted and uh, town's uh, agreeable. So um, this is, and it also notes in the certificate that a certificate is valid for five years. It could be from one through five years, but that's a correct statement. They, they, yeah, they populated it with five. Um, I think we had this discussion on uh, another similar business in this last year, uh, Eric. So it's yep. uh, they've requested five, but the board would have some flexibility if they're uncomfortable with that. So um, just to move the conversation along, um, we could have a motion to to uh, to support and sign the certificate of approval for location of a salvage yard, salvage yard for all metals recycling in Hardwick. I'll move. I guess I had a... okay. oh. We have a motion and a question. Can we maybe have a second and have the question as discussion? I'll second it. Yeah. Okay, Lucian. 
I guess mine was more of a question of process because I'm I'm not sure like if we if we're doing things that aren't on the agenda, I'm not sure how how much like we I guess we we voted the town truck and I was I had a question about whether what what kind of things we can do of consequence that aren't specifically mentioned on the agenda. Just it seems like it, it the the spirit of um of having the public informed so that they can come and comment if they want to. I'm not against this particular thing. I'm just sort of wondering yeah. if it's really really for the in the best sort of um yeah, you know, open meeting law standards to vote this without it being on the agenda. Right, because it's not as well warned as it could be if it had been on the agenda when you know when the agenda was posted. That's what you're thinking. Yeah, and I mean it's probably not of much consequence. It might be technical, but I just wanted to bring that up as a possible. Concern. No, yeah, I think that it's a good <laughs> point. Time um, constraint for them. Do we can we push it to the next meeting? That's what I'm double checking. Yeah, and um, I, I very much appreciate what Lucian has pointed out here, and uh, just it's one of those things that unfortunately slipped past on agenda development. So I'm trying to check. I mean, I also think that Lucian, well, I think you're you're totally right that the the best process is to have stuff warned as and as far in advance as possible to get public participation. Um, we also do have every meeting we have set adjust agenda as our first item so we can right. add add things on the fly and then we do have you know new business and old business at the end to follow up on old things or bring up new things i mean they are right. they were they sorry but, they were they were trying to get uh, a response uh, in advance of March first, so this is on me. I just didn't get it on the agenda in a timely manner. Can we so, retroactively ask the agenda, Eric? Well, I don't. I, but that doesn't address Lucian's point, really, right? Because his point was that if I think is that if we'd warned it with it on as an item, if somebody was interested, they might have noticed it and showed shown up, but. Could you guys add it to the special meeting next week? I'd rather not just because that's our pre-town meeting and the and the bond uh, thing, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Personally, uh, I'd rather just uh, just as a for good conversation. Uh, did, again, I checked in with the uh, zoning administrator with Kristen, and not aware of any um, issues, uh, any complaints, uh, nothing that's been put on file with uh, Vermont DEC in regards to their operations. That doesn't address Lucian's point about you know if anybody had any concerns, but generally they are trying to fly by the rules here. Right, and you know. Chances are nobody will, will does have concerns with it. I just wanted to bring that up. Understood. No, it's good. I, it's good to keep us mindful of what we bring up, sort of on the fly. I think that's you're right. However, I think in this case, could we move the question? We can move the question. So, uh, how about is there more discussion on this? So all in favor of signing the certificate of approval for location of a salvage yard, all metals and hardwick, please say aye. 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 Four, five. Aye. Okay, that's everybody, so it's unanimous. Thank you, everyone, and we will try uh, to- So we're trying to figure out the signature process and we're stuck in this age of, we still need some ink on paper. I, I just, we'll just need to coordinate that this next week with yep. everybody. Yep. Uh, thank, thank you, everybody. I'll probably need Alberta. reminders. What was? Alberta. Uh -huh. She's just, she's there uh -huh. in name only. <laughs> I'm pretending to be here with, yes? <laughs> I know, I just blew your cover, I'm sorry. Are you expecting me tomorrow? I am expecting you tomorrow. So if Sean actually emails it to me, I can be the start of signatures tomorrow. Right, what time? Uh, you're supposed to be coming to see me at 8.30. I will be there.
If you, oh, so okay. if, if Wiz gets it from Alberta and brings it to Whistle, then could everybody just come to Whistle and sign it? Is that official enough? So as long we, as it gets signed. Because, yeah, because otherwise, or is- Sean, it doesn't it, need to be notarized, right? So that should be fine. Right, there's no notary. No. Yeah, it sounds good. I could come by over the weekend or something like that. Yeah, I can just have it there. Unless, there, unless you know, Casey needs, is she, I don't know if she's going to be in the office tomorrow or not, but um, I think maybe she's. Does it need to be notarized? Um, Alberta, I'll email it to you so you have it. Perfect. I'll um, print it in the morning and have it for Wiz when she comes in. Thank you, Alberta. And I'll All take right. It sure. All right. So, any other reports, new business, old business? The, um, I would just like to thank Wiz and Lucian for being on the select board. Um, this is their last regular meeting um, before town meeting. So thank you guys. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Good catch. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's thank been good you, working with all of you. It makes me appreciate what you all do. So thank you for all you do. We're going to miss you both very much. Words are failing me. I may write you all something. Oh. <laughs> well, we have we have one more meeting coming up, right? And the words will make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see a good title? <laughs> no poetry. <laughs> Nothing obtuse. All right, so you guys, it's almost eight o'clock. I want to move us. Could we have a motion to go into? So we have two executive sessions. The first one is the um, police contract, Greensboro, discuss that contract. And are we including the chief Inclu police and Sean? Yes, please. Or in the first one, anyway? Yep. So moved. Second. All in favor, going into executive session for, for the that discussion, please say aye. Bye. Bye. Would you okay, like so, a motion? So we're out of executive session uh, at, for the discussing the police contract. And sure, Sherry, we could do it in a motion. Oh, I bet Kaylee could do a better wording, though. But Kaylee, why don't you do this one? Uh, so we're making this a motion, Eric? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the Hardwick Select Board. Mo makes the motion to have our town manager, Sean Fielder, um, write a letter to the Greensboro Select Board, um, notifying them that within the next 10 days, we'd like a decision on the contract uh, of the renewal of the contract for our police, uh, well, I guess, the renewal of our police contract. Uh, the, should we include the January date in that? Not on the motion okay. necessarily. No. Okay. Are we asking for a decision? As you want it to be sure. <laughs> are, are, are we asking for a decision on the contract or are we asking for a decision on whether they want to move forward with a contract or not? Like with, they don't have forward. to they don't have to sign a contract within 10 days. We just want to know if they're intending to move forward or not. Correct. Yeah. Correct. We could say with the contract ending. June 30th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You or, want to include something about if we don't hear from you, we will assume you do not want to continue these conversations or you do not want to pursue this contract. You know, if, if we say we want a decision by within 10 days and we don't get one, then what? I think it's implied. I don't know if we need that in the motion. Like that could be in the letter. If the motion is that we're writing a letter to the effect of needing to know if they want to move forward with the contract or not. Yeah, because we need to do our own planning. So, all Here's right, so Kate, got the motion. I'll second it. John, you have the motion and close enough? I believe so, and I got the recording. <laughs> All right. So, for better or for worse. 
Any more discussion? Please don't have any more discussion. <laughs> no. All in favor of directing Sean to write to the Greensboro, please say aye. 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 All right. That's everybody. Great. Thank you. So next executive session, who wants to move to, we go into executive session to discuss uh, economic development loan contracts. So moved. Ooh, a race. <laughs> a rush. <laughs> wow. Really? Kaylee gets, Kaylee gets the motion. <laughs> Sherry gets the second. Hey, stand by everybody. So uh, Sherry, and then it's, uh, what time is it? 8.32. Okay, all in favor of rolling into the next executive session, please say aye. 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 That's everybody. So, unanimous. Okay, we're recording. So, we have a motion to direct Sean to proceed with the agreement with Front Seat Coffee that continues our current um, standing with collateral. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Kaylee, did you aye? Aye. Okay, so that's everybody. Thank you. So that's it, right? Adjourn. And, um, did Eric, um, sorry, you adjourn. That was just, that's it. <laughs> I was gonna say we have, uh, well, uh, We'll get some more information uh, in regards to our other economic loan development request. Yeah, and revisit that next time. Okay, I'm, I'm stopping hey, the recording. Everybody have a good night. Good Thanks, night. everybody. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.